So I met Jonathan Majors. Come on in. So let's just say that if it wasn't for the Jonathan Majors fan club and it wasn't for my girl Danielle Atherton, uh, this probably would have never happened. So before I get into the details of this video, I would like to thank them for everything that they did for getting this hooked up. And of course, got to New York because of Jonathan Majors sentencing. So. I was able to be early, um, got to see the cameras and everything, and got to be a part of that court sentencing because Jonathan Majors did need the support. So we were able to get in. We sat right behind where Jonathan Majors was, was at. Uh, once Jonathan and Megan uh, Good came in, they sat in front of us, of course. Jonathan was next to his lawyer, Priya Chaudhry. Um, you know, let me just say this. Jonathan Majors is probably one of the nicest celebrities I ever met. And I don't even think in in, in all of this stuff about, you know, well, maybe he's in trouble because I know that's going to come out, come in in the comment section. You know, he was in trouble and he probably needed some support. The guy is just naturally just a nice dude. Came up, showed some love, you know what I mean? Hugged. The man's a hugger. I will say that the man is a hugger. You know, um, but came in, showed us love uh, before everything got, got started, you know what I mean? And was very appreciative that we was there to support him. And in the midst of the, tr uh, of the sentencing, you know, we got to hear, hear from uh, the judge, Michael Gaffney. Um, we got to hear from uh, the prosecution, you know, uh, and then lo and behold, during the midst of, you know, you know, just... Just, you know, do you have some words? Do you want to say anything? You know, uh, after uh, the prosecution set their piece, you know, in comes uh, Grace Jabari. And came in, and I'm going to be honest with you, it's almost like the whole entire mood of the court hearing changed when she walked in. Um, she came in with a large entourage. Um, looks like her sister and some other people were there. Um, she said a long five minute speech that uh, all of us was kind of looking like <sighs> were you know what I mean I mean this man let me just say it like this after all of the evidence that I that I saw in everything that uh, I looked at when I was you know covering this case for her to go out and say this man is going to abuse other women again even megan sat there was like what for real like this is what we're doing right now um it changed the whole entire mood and then it went on a lot longer than what we thought yo the sign is real simple b it says wrap it up wrap that shit up b and i'm sitting there and I'm, I'm i'm seeing this man and he's not even paying this no attention which was a strong amount of feet because my face, what am I, I mean, but again, he's in court, so he can't make the faces I wanted to make. Even I didn't want to make the face. I had to look away because to just say this man is just going to be abusive after the judge said, well, Jonathan, you never had any priors prior to this, never been in trouble with the law. For her to say that this man is just going to go on a rampage and she's going to do, you know, do everything possible to uh so women don't have to go through the same thing again sounds like harassment to me because since it's in court not considered harassment in in my personal opinion now we did see you know a, a lot of reporters got to got, got to uh to be behind uh one of the reporters from the uh the ap uh we seen uh Lori italiano from the uh business insider she was there uh, we got to see uh, Cheyenne Roundtree, you know, of course, we know a chill, you know, with me and chill caller, but I'm gonna be respectful. You know, Cheyenne Roundtree was there uh, from the Rolling Stone uh, and a lot of other reporters. But I am going to say this, 
the lack of black reporters from black publications told me a lot what I needed to know. Why are you guys being so lazy? And this is not a, a personal attack, so I'm not going to stay on this too long. But it did have me have some pause about why isn't the black publications there? I mean, shout out to Lauren Victoria Burke, who was there. Very, very nice. So much love that she gave. So much love. So she was able to be there in court and speak on uh, everything she saw in court. Uh, at the Roland Martin show. So make sure that you check her out. Check out her, uh, her YouTube channel. She is phenomenal. I love her so much. She showed me so much love and everything. I got just, just love for her, you know. So, but she was there. But the lack of more black publications that could have spoken on behalf of this brother is something that I have very much concerns about, you know, and especially with other cases going forward, because now you're, you know, I'm thinking you're just taking what the white media is saying and just, you know, doing your own thing with it. You know, that's the way I feel. After she's, you know, she sat down, um, you know, he was sentenced. Of course, it was 52 weeks of domestic violence cases. And even the judge said, with his case a reckless assault misdemeanor he looked this man dead directly in the eye and and, and and spoke to all of us in the court and said normally cases like this don't go to go, don't don't uh consider jail time and the prosecution and your lawyer knows this and i'm sitting there like well why didn't you offer this deal prosecution in the very beginning so we didn't even have to go through all of this. This is ridiculous. You could have saved this man a lot of uh, harm and headache, especially to his career, if they would have just offered a plea deal in the beginning, then he could have uh, did an appeal. It's not like they didn't have all the information from the prosecution. Remember, a lot of that information was, was uh, buried under one terabyte of data. So it's not like they didn't have this information of her chasing this man down the street and all this other stuff. So afterwards after we got out of court we did go through uh pass by a lot of the media and, and and some of the media was asking us like hey are you giant the major supporters or whatever and uh i should have told them because i know the uh the reporter from the uh from the ap you know acts as you know um you know why what, you know what is the solidarity with you know you guys are color coordinated and uh i know danny looked at me and said hey you know i knew somebody was gonna ask us if we're part of a gang and i said you should have told them we're part of hbo and i don't mean home box office or homeboys in outer space and she was like what that mean help a brother out that's what we was there for to help a brother out you know what i'm saying so you know afterwards you know again like i said we went and uh, passed by reporters they kind of asked who we were you know we were supporting Jonathan Majors you know uh, why do we have on red you know uh, in one of uh, one of the, the the pieces of the crew you know again shout out to the to the to the individuals that came out there uh, that was with us you know who you are from the Jonathan Majors fan group blessings to you guys you guys were amazing and i'm gonna talk about you guys in a second we end up going to a, a location um and we uh got to meet jonathan majors and let me just say this all of the things that people said about this brother i really hate that we tend to look at someone and they don't talk like the way that i talk i'm a loud mouth i talk a lot and this brother is a very very highly intelligent very personable brother he's really reserved very introverted uh black brother very 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 intelligent just you know just talking to him and we got to sit down and you know and i got to tell him why i wanted to defend him because i was in a situation where everything was taken away from me. My scholarship in high school I was 17. My scholarship for K-State for theater was gone. My football scholarship, gone. My $25,000 grant, gone. My life almost cut short. I was looking at 25 years in jail and I had six people who came in to vouch for me, just to sit down and vouch for my character. You know, and then the blessing of this was he had six people to sit down and vouch for his character which was amazing, you know, and we didn't even have to say anything. We just know that after everything that we see here, that this was some bullshit. So, you know, I got to express that with him and, and let him know, 
I slap somebody, you know what I mean? Just for you, man. Like, no, can I be a part of it? I'm just trying to see if I can get a job. And if y'all don't believe I said that, trust and believe I did say that. Uh, so, you know, like I said, we sat down and everybody uh, got to uh, got to speak and got to talk, you know what I mean? And give this man the affirmations that he need that this ain't, this is nothing but a bumper to roll because God got something greater for you. The most high guy already uh, the, the Bible says, don't touch my anointed. So the Most High has his back. I'm not even worried about that, you know. And uh, uh, just speaking with him was just so incredible. Like I said, man, a few words. He was a part of a forensic team in Texas. I was part of my forensic team in Kansas City, Kansas. You know what I mean? So shout out to that. And he asked me a question. He was like, because uh, I did. I did improv duet acting. I did uh, also uh, so, uh, solo. Uh, not so, I did solo interpretation, but I also did duet acting. And I mentioned that I, I played uh, a role of Raising the Sun to hell. I don't even remember because that was so long ago. And when I tell you it was a long time ago, trust me, that was a long time ago. Shout out to my forensics partner back in the day, though. You know what I mean? So shout out to all of y'all. But so, you know, uh, we talked about that. And then we kind of just got up and kind of walked around. And I got to meet uh, Priya Chaudhry. You know, I got to speak with her. Uh, uh, got to speak with his security team. And, you know, got to meet his publicist. And it was just an amazing time. But, of course, I know the guys. They're waiting for the main event, especially the video I sent out. Yes, I was hanging with Megan Good. I got to kick it with Megan Good for a moment. <laughs> You know, so real. And I'm going to tell you, you guys the truth. Something is wrong with me. And I think she knows that something was wrong with me. Because all this woman was doing was eating. She was talking to Danielle. Danielle's having a, a, a conversation with her. Here I come. Sliding on in. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sliding into the function. You know what I mean? Because she was eating that Chick-fil-A. You know what I mean? And I said, uh, you know, I just came in to see where, where, where mine at. You know what I'm saying? Because a brother like me, I like Chick-fil-A too. I'm trying to see where my chicken deluxe sandwich is at. You know what I mean? So she starts laughing and, you know, uh, gets up. And I'm not going to lie to her. I, I'm not going to lie to you guys either. I told her when I was 15, I had a crush on her. Because when Friday came out, she was the girl who said, hey. you know what I mean? And I told her, I used to tell everybody she was my girlfriend. Even though damn well, they had no girlfriend at 15. Something was wrong with me. My, 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 my lips and face didn't kick in with my body yet. You know what I'm saying? I had that, 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 that you know, that Hey Arnold head. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know, she laughed about it. It was able to get some video in. Uh, you know, and just hang, you know, we got to take pictures. When I tell you that these two people are the nicest celebrities, I done kicked it with football players and stuff like that before. You know, I met a few actors. These two, the great, I'm talking about so incredibly awesome. They were amazing people to hang with. And Megan was super nice, super chill you know all of that just you know the fun she was so fun and like i said jonathan was so stoetic in in honestly i'm gonna be honest with you when he said that he's a great man and that he's doing great things for his community let me ask you guys a question how many a-list celebrities that we have that our children could look up to i mean we had denzel Chadwick was on that meteoric rise after he played T'Challa and then sadly we lost him and then you see Jonathan Majors on a, a historic elevation and he was Cain the Conqueror he was like my children was asking me you got to meet Cain you got to meet he who remains that's awesome dad that's how great this brother was I mean he is and to be able to have this brother's back, because I know the, the, the devil can steal anything, man, but he can't steal your joy. And everything that the devil stole, God can automatically restore, restore tenfold. Ask Job. You know what I mean? So to know that this brother, where his apex was at, shows you how blessed and how anointed this brother is and how we need more black people to be able to stand up for our brother. Stop, we gotta stop. You know, it's fun to make jokes and stuff like that. I make jokes or whatever. To be able to see where this brother is, 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 is his height is at, we need to get that brother back on that pedestal. 
that's what we need to do. We need to stand behind this brother. This brother did not harm this woman. He's not a abuser or any of that. He's just a black man who got caught up by the system and we got to see it play out in real time. And all this, the relationship is fake between Jonathan and Megan. Kill that. Kill. I'm see everybody that was there got to see it for themselves, man. It's a beautiful couple, beautiful people. I didn't freak out. You know what I mean? I, I'm used to, I've been around celebrities before. You know what I mean? So I don't really get freaked out. You know what I'm saying? It's just my personality is just what it is. You know what I'm saying? And then in football, they used to tell you, act like you've been there before when you score a touchdown. You know what I mean? So I never got to score a touchdown when I played football, but this was a touchdown that I needed. Now, I'm going to tell you, once I got in my room and, you know, I was by myself, it hit me. You know what I'm saying? That I got to hang out with a DC superhero and a Marvel superhero, if you want to put it in that context. So... I just wanted to make this video to let you guys know, you know, that this was amazing. Thank you uh, again to Danielle Atherton. Thank you to the Jonathan Major Fan Club. I am so forever grateful. I had an amazing time. I got to hang out with beautiful people in Times Square and got to enjoy myself. And we literally, there was no arguing. There was no nothing like that. It was no, no egos. We were all there for each other. But of course, at the end of the day, we was there to support our brother, Jonathan Major. So Jonathan, I love you, my brother. Thank you so very much for being so kind and so grateful to make it good. You beautiful, beautiful sister. Thank you so much. Beautiful inside and out. You are so amazing to me. Thank you so very much. And you already know. I love you guys and appreciate the journey. I'm out. Peace and Bob Har. Wait a minute. You're telling me the video's over? What? <laughs> okay, I guess so. If you have came to this portion of the video, thank you so very much for sticking to the end. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that little bell notification so you never miss one of my videos. And if you really want to, you don't got to, go ahead and follow the social media links that's down below. Until next time, I'll let you guys later. Peace and Bob Hire, y'all. Y'all take care of yourselves.